lost the chosen, man. <laughs> My mom and my grandma makes it. They make it too, so I've grown up with this meal pretty much my whole life. I consider myself still a rookie in the kitchen, but I know a little something of what I'm doing. Being 345 is definitely not your typical athlete size. I wouldn't really say there was no diet. I mean, not that I was purposely trying to eat sloppy, but I mean, I just wasn't really paying attention to the stuff that I eat. I mean, I knew when COVID season ended, I just knew something had to change. And I've never been raised to do something like, not to curse, but like half-ass, you know what I'm saying? So it was just, if I'm gonna go do it, you might as well go all the way and go beyond. To me, it was a full lockdown, lose the weight. That's all it was, all it was, all it was. I started playing football when I was in middle school, actually my seventh grade year. I wasn't really like a sports type of kid. My family wasn't either, so they didn't really press sports on me. I think I kind of got into wrestling first. So they coach was like, you're not playing football? And Deshaun was just like, no. And it was just like, with your size, you're not playing. Because Deshaun was big at the age of 12. He went and he just wanted to go hang out with his friends. He said that all he knew was that when they told him to hit somebody, that's what he did. From there, it just took off. My seventh grade year, around the same time I started in sports, my dad was visiting for the weekend and he left and left the TV on. You can just feel this one in the air when these two teams get together. I seen on ESPN, Michigan State just got done playing Michigan. Play fake in trouble, down he goes. And oh, it was just like a sack after sack after sack. Wants to throw, oh, no oh, time, oh, down that. he goes again. He is swarmed. And I'm like, man, like, hold on, I want to play for these dudes. Like, they got these sweet old green jerseys and stuff like that. And from there, I just was like, I got to play there. Like, I got to play there. Don't turn your shot, hey, keep your head up. <laughs> Ready? Ready up. Good, good. Nice battle with your step, okay? When I came in my freshman year, I was 345. There you go. I love it. In my head, I thought I was still on top of the world pretty much. Thought I was able to come out here and still run and compete with the top guys. I finally figured that out quickly my freshman year that it was just tough. Couldn't really run far, couldn't run fast. I'd be in one play, as soon as that play will be over with, I can literally already feel my body wanting to shut down. When we first saw Deshaun play, it was kind of like, what are you going to get from this dude? He's a big dude, he going to eat the double teams up. But like seeing your friends struggle and push through things, I mean, all you can do is be supportive. I mean, if you're a real friend, that's all you can do. I'll admit, I was out there pretty much surviving. I was trying to just make it through anything that they had us do. My mentals was not very strong at the time. When Coach Tug got hired, I remember the day like it was yesterday. It was the way he was talking, like the way he was delivering his message was like, whoa, like, y'all sitting here smiling, like this dude sound like serious, almost like, you know, like, bringing an NFL atmosphere here. Bust your ass in the weight room, bust your ass in the conditioning, Finish through the through the line, head but the line. We'll play fast. Both sides of the ball, special teams. Players play fastest when they know what they're doing. And last but not least, you know, we'll we'll play physical football. It's almost like as he was talking in front of the entire team, it seemed like it was directed toward me, like just the way he wanted things to be. For me, I understood that if I continue to be 345. It was not going to work out. Ramsey in trouble, and he's sacked. Down he goes at the 40-yard line, Deshaun Mallory. A D-tackle, usually they're around 290 to 320 is usually where you keep them at. Deshaun really didn't want to be 345. Like, he wanted to lose weight, and he wanted to slim down. I want to play for this dude. I actually want to commit deeper because I want to prove to him that I can play. And I knew if I got cut, it was 100% on me. Levis in at quarterback, fakes it, and Michigan State saw that one coming. After COVID season, we played Penn State for our last game. I came straight home, like we got off the plane, drove back to the facility, I got in my car and drove straight to Chicago. And I think when I got there, I just remember looking at my mom and I was like, I cannot go back 345. He definitely explained that the, the weight was his biggest downfall. When he finally told me about him wanting to lose the weight, I felt that at that point that he grew up. 
you know, if it, he took responsibility for the way that he put on, he was taking responsibility for his health and just the overall player that he wanted to be. To me, I figured time was running out. I dove head first. He's violent. You gotta be in the weight room attacking the weight. That's one thing that Deshaun is. Like, he attacks the weights. He's whether it's squad, bench, doesn't matter. You gotta be a dog in the weight room, too. There were definitely times where you work out, you start to feel good, you may lose five pounds, and then like a week later, if you're not seeing results, you're gonna wanna quit. You're gonna wanna go get that cheeseburger, you wanna go get a shake, because it's like, well, whatever. Where's the collegiate drink at? Oh. Miss Amber, our nutritionist, I would go to her, and she would always ask, like, what do I like to eat, and start that, and I would tell her, and it was like right off the bat, she would always be like, you know, we gotta cut certain things out. And it took a while for me to kind of cut things out only because I'm just used to eating what I've always been eating. His plan obviously was just like to fit him as a person. Like I'm very big on everything here is individualized to each of our players. He was already very consistent, so it was pretty easy to work with him. And all it was was just little modifications here and there. So we were still having our spaghetti nights, but okay, we're having a salad with it as well. So it's just all about balance and just doing that every single day. You start, you start running, you start lifting. It's like, man, hold up, I can compete with the DBs? I can compete with the running backs? From being 345, the lowest I got down to during my weight loss jersey was 245. So I lost exactly 100 pounds. He is an incredibly strong human being. And like watching him just adapt to everything and change everything and just make all these leaps and strides and then to watch how happy he's feeling. And you just saw that million watt smile on his face. It like, you can't even describe that feeling. My heart was just so warm. So it was like, oh my God, we did that. Like, that was awesome. I need to get on his program. I mean, losing 100 pounds is, is not the easiest thing to do in the world. We have tremendous resources here with Amber. They'll do anything that they can for the players. It doesn't surprise me that, you know, they will work, you know, well with him um, to help him reach his goals in terms of, of his weight loss. But it was like I was able to run again. I was able to like truly feel more alive being out there versus like dragging around so much unhealthy weight. As far as him losing that weight, he did it for himself. Just him doing it and being dedicated, that was like one of the proudest moments. Deshaun is an inspiration to us all, especially me. Like he doesn't know that I envy him and I definitely look up to him even though I'm his mom, but he he's a great kid. I like to joke and say that I buried old Deshaun. I can't even remember who that guy is. He was very soft. When I told myself that we got to commit deeper, that's when I made the decision to bury him. Because it was like, that's not me. That's never going to be me again. <sighs> Man, I swear, just thinking about it is crazy. But you just got to keep going. You just truly gotta keep going and just believe in yourself, trust yourself, trust your words that you say to yourself. I feel, I feel like that truly goes a long way. When you truly dig deep and believe in yourself, the sky's the limit. And even then though, there's another limit that you can reach. Don't hold yourself to no limits though. I tell a lot of people, don't open a parachute if you choose to jump. Keep going, free fall, for real, free fall. You're gonna land on your feet eventually. That's why I keep going. What's up, you guys? I'm Luke Bayless for Men's Tennis. Green Crocker. Watch us take on Western and Southern Open this weekend. Go green. Go white. We've entered the venue. Say hi, Reed. Say hi, IP. What's up? What up? JP? Here we got practicing on center court. Daniel Mevdevev, number one in the world. Unreal. Coach Mike. Oh, new assistant coach. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think is going to win this match, uh, Brooksby or Tommy Cole? Tommy Cole for sure. It's a hot what's take. Pick, it's a hot take. Pick, no, I agree, but that's a hot take. Big 
Wow. Update, just got Tommy Paul that dub. Mm, mm. We got Maxi over here, pretty hungry. Getting pumped up for Serena Williams tonight. Let's get it. The cool thing about the Western and Southern Open is that you are so close to everyone and all the professionals and you get to get autographs, you get to watch them right next to the court, which is really awesome. And it's just very interactive. Like today, I just walked past Sloane Stevens and Nick Kyrgios, just casually. It's pretty cool. I'm with freshman David Say. David, how are you feeling about being at the Western Southern Open for the first time? It's awesome. Great experience. Time to get out of here, get some food, shower, and go to bed. Been a long day. Go green, boys. Uh, look at this, look at this. This is going on Spartan Vision. Everyone look pretty. I know that's impossible for Andy. What are you excited about at camp? Kaylin, you go first. I'm excited to meet everyone and run with them. I'm excited to meet everyone, see everyone's dance moves. Abby. I'm excited to swim in Lake Michigan. Oh. <laughs> I always love coming up here and it's really beautiful to run and just hang out and really bond with the team. Um, yeah, it's a little sad. That's my last one. First time at camp. So what do you think? Well, I like it so far. I love the team aspect and the running's been pretty hard, but it's been good so far. Team's looking great this camp session. Um, everybody just has a lot of energy going into the season. <laughs> it was fun to get to know all, all the younger guys and have fun with some of the guys we already knew. We, uh, we got a lot of work in this week. A lot of us are really healthy right now in a really good spot. The team camaraderie is really high. We're like a big family and that, that's exactly what you want in a good team. <laughs> I'm here with Fraser Wilson. Where are we going, Fraser? What's up, boys? Fraser here. We're about to go on a little hike. I think this season, we, our team is really young, and I feel like we have a lot of potential that we might not even realize yet, just because I think compared to years past, we're relatively relatively young for sure and less experienced so I'm just really excited for us to get out there and start racing because once we just start going we're just gonna unlock a lot of potential that has been there the whole time but we haven't realized yet we did get wait yeah this is called photo crash This is me just crashing people's photos. There you go. Thanks, Abdi. I'm gonna go around and crash into this photo. Photo crash. Yay! Photo crash. Come on, guys. Photo crash. It's very beautiful up here in northern Michigan. That is definitely a plus. It's a change up from East Lansing, especially training together for the first time with some new people.
As a teammate, Olivia was humble. You could count on her for giving her all and for everything we did. She was a big supporter to others, and she loved what she did, and she made everyone know it. She always supported you, and she saw when you were working hard, and made sure to let you know that she appreciated all that you were doing. She was your biggest fan at all times. She was the reason we rode this past season. We did it all for her, so we have her varsity letter for this year and last year. We miss her, but we did everything for her, and we're just so grateful for her and everything she now represents, and we can't wait to go fast in her boat. What Irene and I have done is we set up funding early on and we decided to create a scholarship on Olivia's behalf and I wanted to present to Kendall a scholarship on behalf of Thank Olivia. You. Being on the journey with the grief of losing Olivia, um, you learn a lot about yourself, who you are. It's great seeing the girls doing the fundraising, purchasing the boat, prepping it, naming it. I'm sad that we had to lose Olivia for it, but on the flip side, we've probably grown closer to a lot of people over this. That boat to me represents um, when those girls get into it, when those rowers get into it, just working together every day and, and remembering what she brought to them and not just as a rower, but as someone who would be supportive, be there to cheer them on. It hurts, but you, know, you try to channel that pain into something good. Yeah, it's all you can do. I'm just lean on the people that are here and embrace the people who are here that we still have. But yeah, I think about her, I think the world of her. I'm just proud to be your dad. So this is our invitational that we host every year. It's a perfect time for the whole team to run together. If this goes well, it really sets the tone for the rest of the year. We want to set a tone of, of confidence and, and strength. Losing Morgan, you know, it was big. He's like one of the nation's best. Um, so it just, it gave guys a little bit more hunger to, to come in and run fast. We're in it for the fight. We're in it to compete. If everyone here is putting in the equal effort, the equal fight, you got to remember that out there. Let's be all in today. Let's be in for that fight that we talked about. Let's bring it in. Go green, go white, go state on three. One, two, three. Go green, go white, go state! the only one that we really get to host and we have all of our family and friends here and everyone that supports us. I was just trying to encourage my teammates and run with them. It was great to have Katie and McKenna. They kind of did the work for me and yeah I'm just really proud of them. Caitlin's only a sophomore and just running comes so naturally to her. Every time in practice she's just a hard worker. She pushes me. We train together. And the moment she started pulling away I was like let's go Caitlin you got it. I mean, the team's been training really well lately. Um, I'd say we have a very good start to the season. Everyone put in the work this summer. Um, we're all ready to go. Pretty well. I did out. I went out there and did what I wanted to do. It feels really good. I feel like I definitely needed something like this. It's a good start to the season. Gives me a lot of confidence going in um, to next week and the weeks after. Today was really great. It's exactly what we were going for. We talk a lot about being in it for the fight. If you're anxious, if you're scared, going in any way, working through those things, fighting for one another, racing as a team. When you know the course is gonna get hard, you have to give yourself a job and you gotta have those reminders of staying in the positive and doing the next thing. If we're all doing that together, we're just gonna keep getting better and better. Cross country 
track season, any time when we go to race. If you keep it simple, you keep it about the fight, you keep it about just beating the person in front of you, the times are gonna come. Let's wrap it up. I want Lauren Freeland to bring us in, break us down. Tremendous step forward today. Super proud of you, let's get recovered, have a good long run tomorrow, and just keep grinding this whole season. Go green, go white, go stay on three. One, two, three. Go green, go white, go stay!